Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and I want to thank you for being here. The reason that I'm making this video is I believe that there is something very big and very dangerous coming at us very fast right now, and I want as many people to be prepared as possible. This is the first time in history that there has been an everything bubble. This, you know, back in the year 2000, it was stocks. In the year 2008, it was stocks and real estate. This time it is stocks, real estate, and bonds, and they're all in some of the biggest bubbles of all time. And when this bursts, it's going to be devastating for most people, but it doesn't have to be devastating for you. So this is how to survive the next four years. It has nothing to do with either political party. This is just finance. This is just economics. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I'm Mike Maloney. I wrote the best-selling book on investing in precious metals. I used to tour the world with Robert Kiyosaki of Rich Dad Poor Dad fame, speaking to audiences everywhere about the economy and how it affects them. I also have a video series called The Hidden Secrets of Money, where we tour the world and follow the history of money and show the economics that was going on at the time and how governments keep on making the same stupid mistakes over and over again and how it affects your life today. Back in 2005, there were certain indicators that I was watching that were telling me that there was going to be a stock market crash and a real estate crash. And I started warning people so that they had time to get prepared. I was warning them all through 2005, 6, and 7. Well, those same indicators and some new indicators that I've been watching are flashing red again, telling me that it's time to get prepared for the next big event. And the way that they're flashing, it seems that there's going to be less time this time. It's not three years to get prepared. It's, it's going to be happening pretty soon. And the, like I said, this is the first time that there's an everything bubble. We are going to be covering the stock market bubble, the real estate bubble, the credit slash debt bubble, which is the bond bubble. We're going to be covering technological risks and geopolitical risks, but most importantly, how to get prepared. So let's get into the evidence right now and take a look at it. Let's start the everything bubble with the stock market portion of the bubble. I'm going to present a few charts here, but they're fairly easy to understand, so stick with me. This is data compiled by Dr. Robert Schiller of Yale University, and he's gone all the way back to the 1880s and compiled what's called the price earnings ratio. He's recreated the S&P 500 by putting together the 500 largest companies in the United States at the time, going all the way back into the 1880s. And the price of a stock versus how much the company is earning is a very good uh, measure of whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued. And uh, if it's priced down at four or five or six times earnings or 10 times earnings, it's a bargain. If it's priced above 15, it's too expensive. If it's priced above 20, it's in a bubble. Uh, and what you see here is that right now we're at a PE ratio. The price is 29.19 times the earnings of the company per share. And the only times that it's ever been in a bubble this big was a few weeks in the, at the end of 1929 before the stock market crash, and a couple of years, 1999-2000, when the NASDAQ crashed. And so this is, is saying it's, it's in a hyper bubble. It's even far higher right now than it was in 2007 when the stock market crashed, and that was the global financial crisis. So it's in a bigger bubble than it was back in the 2007 peak. This is margin debt. And uh, one of the things that's important about margin debt is uh, when people buy stocks by borrowing currency to pay for this stock, they can get what's called margin call. If the, the value of the collateral, the stock, drops too low, the brokerage house will make that uh, investor or trader cough up a bunch of currency and pay the, uh, to bring their equity up to a level where they're still comfortable letting them have the loan. And so margin debt goes along with complacency. When people are complacent and they're not pricing risks, risk into the market, 
they tend to uh, gamble and go further out onto a limb. So right now, margin debt is up at an all-time high. So here's the S&P 500, and this is how much margin debt, how much traders have borrowed versus uh, credit balances in their accounts where they're sitting on cash. And right now it's at an all-time high. Another way of looking at that is margin debt as a percentage of the economy. But this is the volatility index. This measures whether uh, investors are nervous or complacent. And when they're not complacent, they're not pricing in all of the risks of some sort of event in the market. And what you see here is that the volatility index in 2007 dropped down to very low levels of just 10. And today, it's at the same level that it was at back in 2000, the peak in 2007, when investors thought that nothing could go wrong, that everything would keep on going up forever. So complacency is at a maximum. Uh, pricing in risk into the markets, that's at a minimum. And uh, we are leveraged out to where this is the margin debt as a percentage of our economy. And this is at an all-time high. And that's dangerous. What it says is that if there's a crash, this crash is going to be very fast because there's going to be a lot of margin calls. Margin calls force uh, investors and traders to sell positions so that they can come up with cash. So they've got to liquidate a whole bunch of their portfolio to come up with cash to give to the brokerage house. And that causes the crash to happen a lot faster. So it, it's, it's one of the indicators and it's also a signal of uh, a crash be, being very violent. Um, one of the authors that I like reading is John Hussman of Hussman Funds. Uh, and he's a great fundamental analyst. Uh, he isn't a technical analyst uh, trying to look at patterns in the stock market. What he's looking for is uh, the uh, fundamental health of the economy and the stock market. And he wrote an article recently called Exhaustion Gaps and the Fear of Missing Out. And basically what is driving the market right now is the fear of missing out. Somebody sees their neighbor uh, making cash and, and they want to jump on that train also. And, uh, and a, a gap in the market is something you need to know about before I show you his chart. He didn't explain what a gap was in his article. But when a stock is going up and trading during the day and there's a range to that trading and then the next day it, open, it gaps up and opens up at a higher level than it was the previous day and it doesn't come back down and visit that same trading range, it leaves a gap in the chart like that gap and this gap and this gap and this gap. Now those gaps are a certain signal that something is going on and uh, they, one interesting thing about gaps is uh, there was a study recently where they studied the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is 30 stocks. And each of those 30 stocks was studied separately. And the uh, people that were conducting the study found that over 91% of the time, the market will come back down to fill those gaps. It'll cover that area. There's some gaps right now. The market will probably, it's got a 91 to 92% chance that it's going to come down and fill those gaps. Now, John Hussman found that when gaps of greater than one half of 1% occur within 2% of the all-time high, and this chart is with all within 2% of the all-time high of the S&P 500, that, that that is a signal that there's an exhaustion of the market, that uh, a lot of the currency that's available, the potential suckers, if you will, getting into a market at the top, the number of those, the amount of currency that can come into the market is becoming exhausted. And um, he developed an indicator where he if it's within 2% of the peak of the market, the all-time high, and these gaps occur of greater than half of a percent, uh, that's an indicator that we're near a market top. Now the S&P only goes back to 1950. So he uh, also included the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, which go back 
uh, all the way back before the crash of 1929. And he added some even uh, greater filters. The stock market has to be in a condition where more than 50% of the advisors are bullish and where the Schiller P.E. ratio that you saw earlier is above 18. And like I said, we're above 29 right now. And when he did that, uh, you can see that this indicator flashes at certain times and it was just weeks before the 1929 stock market crash and then uh, weeks before the pullbacks in the 60s, and this pullback in the 70s where it flashed right at the top, uh, that was a 50% market retracement. So you had 50% losses that you could have avoided if we had access to this data back then. Uh, right at the peak of the 1987 stock market uh, bubble and then crash, uh, it told people, it, this indicator would have told people to get out of the markets before that crash. It flashed a few months before the peak in 1999-2000 when the NASDAQ crashed. It flashed right at the very peak of 2007 and it's flashing again, but it hasn't just been one uh, indication that the stock market is topping. It has flashed five times now uh, in, in just the past few months. So this is eerily similar to the last time around. We're at the peak of a bubble. Everybody thinks that this can go on forever. And market internals are deteriorating. The, stocks, the stock market is way overvalued, and we're way overdue for a recession, just like the last time around. The answer is gold and silver. The last time around, if you had switched from stocks to gold and silver, even if you were a year early and stocks continued running up another 10%, when they crashed, the stock market crashed 62.8%. But gold rose significantly, and there was a pullback when the stock market was crashing because of uh, margin call. Uh, any trader that had both gold and other stocks on his uh, uh, platform uh, had to, if he was out on margin for the other stocks, he had to liquidate his gold also to pay uh, the brokerage house. And gold ended up uh, gaining 40%, where you would have lost 62.8% in the stock market. And the one thing, you know, Warren Buffett, his number one rule is don't lose money. The number two rule is don't forget rule number one. And the reason he says that is because if you lose 50%, you have to make gains of 100% just to get back to even. And that is, it's hard to make gains of 100%. It's not a real easy thing to do. So losses are very hard to recover from. You want to try and prevent them at all costs. And now is a time to try and prevent them. The next bubble in our everything bubble is the real estate bubble. Now in 2008 and 9, Real estate crashed in the United States and Great Britain, but in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and China, the real estate bubble just took a breath and kept on running. This is an article from McLean's. It's a Canadian publication, and they're saying that the Canadian housing bubble looks disturbingly familiar. And uh, this is another article that says Home Capital, they're the biggest mortgage lender in Canada, their stock plunged after the mortgage lender seeks a $2 billion credit line, and that credit line is basically a bailout from the Bank of Canada, Canada's central bank. So the bailouts are already, this is a credit line that they're going to be guaranteed, but what's going to happen is the crash will start and this will turn into a bailout because it's going to be much bigger than just this $2 billion. What is happening is there's a run on home capital right now. $600 million worth of deposits have been withdrawn recently, making them unstable, and their books are not that sound. So here's some of the Canadian real estate evidence. This is the price of homes compared to the income of the uh, buyer. So this is the affordability index. And you can see the peak in 2007 for the United States and then the crash. And in Canada, it just took a little breath and then kept on running. And the peak is way above where we were in the United States and Great Britain back in 2007. So this is going to be something bad. 
This is the uh, home index of home prices. So the last one was the affordability, and Canadians are being crushed right now. They really can't afford their homes uh, if they're buying new ones. Uh, but the prices, the home prices, you can see that we crashed and then are rebounding back into a bubble, and they're in a hyper bubble. So what I see here is that uh, this crash could start in places like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, or somewhere else around the world, China, and it'll start to sweep over the world. We're overdue for a recession, like I said, and uh, there will be a devastating crash here, and it'll go into real estate and the stock markets because our uh, real estate is also in a bubble in the United States. This is Robert Schiller again from uh, Yale University, his data, and he's got home prices here going back into the 1880s, and they're indexed. So if, if everything was at fair value compared to the rest of the economy, this would be a straight line. But when home prices go above or below the rest of the economy, home prices were a bargain here during the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression. And then they went into little bubbles in the 70s and 80s, a hyper bubble in uh, 2007, and that popped. And it, only, it didn't even bounce down to fair value. It, it, and then it went back into a bubble. And what I want you to see here is that where we're at today, there's only been in a bubble this big or, or slightly larger for just uh, 2005, 6, and 7. Just a few years in all of this data going all the way, way back to the 1880s. So this suggests that uh, when the next recession comes, we are going to see stocks and real estate crash. Now this gives me such a sense of deja vu. It is eerily similar to the last time around. If you replace the name home capital with either Northern Rock in Great Britain or countrywide in the United States, those uh, entities got into trouble. Uh, their depositors started withdrawing funds. The mortgage-backed securities came back to bite them in the butt and they needed bailouts. And it caused this cascading effect of the global financial crisis of 2008. And here we have home capital and the same story is starting again. Now, if you, I'm going to give you that copy of my book at the end of this video. Uh, on page 103, if you read about that, I end it you know, with the Bear Stearns collapse. And uh, I said that there's going to be a bunch of big bailouts and there's going to be huge currency creation. And boy, did that came, come true. I got the chance to write that in April of 2008. The book came out in August. In uh, September, the bailouts began. And before the end of the year, Ben Bernanke had doubled the amount of paper dollars that exist, base currency. And then with QE2, they added another 100%. And QE3, another 100%. And we ended up with about $4.2 trillion worth of base currency, where just a few years before, it had been $0.8 trillion. And this is the reason that you need to protect yourself. And the answer for this was also precious metals. This is a chart from 2007 again, but it goes all the way to, to today. And the stock market crashed, and then it had to rebound from that crash. And it's up, but gold, if you had switched to gold back then, you'd be up almost double whatever your gains were in the, for the S&P 500. So the next bubble that we're going to talk about in the everything bubble is the bond bubble, which is the credit slash debt bubble. And what you see here is this is the 30-year treasury bond. And this is a perfect bull market from 1981 until today, that minimum in 81 until today. And, you know, there's nothing that I can say that's bad about this chart. It is a perfect bull market. The only thing I can say that's bad about it is this has been going on for 36 years. So no bull market can go forever. Toward the end of a bull market, some things are, whatever it is that's in that bull market that's been rising for all those years is now becoming overvalued compared to the rest of the economy, and it's in a bubble. And all bubbles pop eventually. Another thing I want to say about this, this is the bond price going up. 
uh, that is the inverse of bond yields. So the interest rate goes down as this price goes up. So if you take, a, to, to get a really long perspective on the cycle of bonds, that they go up and they go down, we're going to go to some of Dr. Robert Schiller's data again from Yale University. And this data goes back into the 1880s. And here we have uh, a cycle right here. And if you uh, look at the trough where the cycle hits its lowest interest rate and then interest rates start reversing and start going up and then back down into a trough again, what you discover is that this cycle is even. The number of years on either side of that peak is almost exactly the same. So if we go to the cycle that we're in today of rising interest rates all through the 60s and 70s to 1982 and then falling interest rates, what we discover is if we measure the same amount of time going out into the future from that peak as we had from when the cycle reversed back uh, in the 40s, we discover that this would put us in a, some sort of bond crisis in the year 2019, 2020, 2021. And the thing about uh, bonds is that that goes along with a shift in the world monetary system. When I was writing my book, I discovered that every 30 to 40 years, the world had had a new monetary system. We had the classical gold standard up until World War I, the gold exchange standard between the wars, the Bretton Woods system from 1944 to 1971, and then the global dollar standard from, from 1971 until today. And the thing about this is the worst designed out of all these systems is the global dollar standard. It was just like the default. It was what was left after the Bretton Woods system. But it's developing stress cracks and beginning to fall apart very quickly and people aren't paying attention to this enough. But history is about to repeat. This is going to start to crumble. There will be an emergency meeting of the G20 finance ministers or something like that and there will be a new world monetary system. And when that happens, it's basically a new world monetary system is going to equal a currency crisis this time because these were baby steps off of gold to from full gold backing behind the dollar to nothing. And this time we're going to be going from nothing to something. And instead of it just being something that the big banks and the international corporations feel, it's going to be something that everybody feels. And so what is this crash going to look like? I think it's a two-stage crash. It's going to be, you know, I've talked about the roller coaster crash now for years. And, you know, it's like being pulled up a roller coaster on a chain and then you go over the top in 2007. We went over the top and we went into a crash and then we got pulled up on a chain. But this chain was a, a bubble that we were pushed into through zero interest rates and massive currency creation that warped the economy. And all that energy is going to be released in a stock market and real estate crash. But during that crash, investors have been taught that the safe haven to run to is U.S. bonds. And so at first, I think we're going to get a pop in bonds, that they'll go up again. Interest rates will fall even further. But then, uh, just like a pile up in the fog, the crash happens, and then a truck comes out of the fog. You know, everybody gets out of their cars, everything's all right, and then this big semi-truck comes out of the fog and piles into everybody. I think it's going to be this two-stage crash with uh, stocks and real estate. Everybody's going to be saying everything's all right. The government's going to be telling you it's time to get back into the stock market, and then the crash resumes. However, this time, the baby boomers are out of time. I'm a middle baby boomer. Uh, I'm 61. And if I lost half of my wealth again or more, I'm basically out of time. And I would probably choose to not go back into the stock markets or real estate where I had lost, you know, I've been punished. Uh, if you were in the stock market in 2000, you got punished. If you were in it in 2007, you got punished again. So twice you've been through a brutal crash. In 2000, if you were in real estate, you were through a brutal crash in 2007. So what would happen, and you need to watch episodes uh, 
6 and 7 of Hidden Secrets of Money to understand this baby boom demographic, the roller coaster crash, and how it's going to affect you. Because this is the end game for the roller coaster crash. And when the baby boomers don't come back in and start investing in stocks and bonds and the economy again, and they just start saving up cash, it's devastating for something called velocity of, of currency. And you need to watch episodes six and seven to understand that. I don't have, we don't have time to go through that right here. So the answer and how to get prepared for this situation of this roller coaster crash and the potential of a new world monetary system is a little bit more complex than the answers last time. It's not just gold and silver. You want to have an alternative monetary system already ready to go. And those actually exist today. They're called cryptocurrencies. It started with Bitcoin. There have been another, uh, uh, several others that have been introduced and I own a few of them. I don't own a lot of cryptocurrency, but I think it's something that's necessary to be prepared because if the monetary system failed, you would be able to do transactions right away with other people, and you can do them over long distances. You can do them over the internet, just like you pay with a credit card today. And so, you know, when I used to tour with Robert Kiyosaki, he would always talk about in a real crisis, you want the five G's. You want ground, grub, gas, guns, and gold. And to that, I've got to add a couple of other letters. These don't start with G, but you want S and you want C. You want silver and you want cryptocurrencies. That's the answer to protecting yourself from a shift in world monetary systems. So that wraps up part one of this presentation of the Everything Bubble. We've covered the stock market, real estate, bonds, which is the credit slash debt bubble, and we've covered the roller coaster crash and how it might play out. The next thing that we're going to get into is geopolitical risk. All of the risks that exist today magnify uh, the potential crash that is coming. Now, I'm old enough to remember the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I cannot remember another time in my lifetime except the Cuban Missile Crisis when the world has been like right at the brink where the risks were so high. So the geopolitical risk right now is very, very high, but there's another risk that uh, adds to it and makes it even more dangerous, and that's the technological risk. We live in a world today of all of these single points of failure, things like the internet. That if, if the internet goes down, society stops. And um, if you haven't seen the movie Zero Days, I highly recommend that you watch this. It's available on Netflix and Apple TV and uh, Amazon and so on. And this is about the Stuxnet virus, which was allegedly created by the US government to attack Iran's nuclear program. And the thing is that this was a decade ago. Uh, viruses today, this spread into every computer on Earth but it had a very specific set of rules that it had to identify for it to target its victim. And today, the viruses that uh, exist and that have been created could give anybody, the, their creators, anywhere on the planet, control over almost anything that exists on the planet. Suddenly, the water could stop coming out of the tap, the electricity goes off, the monetary system goes down. Uh, so we live in a world now that is, is much more dangerous. And to show you what this would look like, here's an example. This is uh, Norse Viking, uh, their example of uh, attacks that are on being directed towards servers right now. And these are just hacking attacks. This isn't viruses. But this is what the next war is going to look like before it actually becomes a physical war. And so the answer to all of this is basically the five G's and silver. Uh, if the internet goes down, cryptocurrencies are not going to have, they're, they're going to be worthless for as long as the internet is down. However, cryptocurrencies, the blockchains are very robust and as soon as the internet came back up, they would be available. But you can't rely solely on cryptocurrencies some gold and some silver for small transactions and making sure that you've got things like um, emergency food and, and uh, some gasoline and so on is important. 
So, you know, I've, I've uh, said many times that the answer is gold and silver, and I've said some cryptocurrencies, but gold and silver are actually some of the most undervalued assets in the world. Uh, if you look at the last time that they were in a bubble, 1980, gold hit 850, and it's up in the $1,200 range right now. Uh, silver hit 50 bucks, and it's selling for 16 bucks right now. Uh, what, what other asset have you ever seen that is selling at a discount to its 1980 price? There isn't really anything out there. So uh, gold and silver, uh, I started picking up gold back in 2002, and I started picking up silver in 2003. And so that was way back here with gold. And everybody is wishing that they were buying back then. There was this big run up and we're still uh, way ahead. This starts in the year 2000. So this is gold's performance against the S&P 500 for this century. But the thing is, we've been in this brutal bear market now for five years. And what I am seeing is a very good sign. And that is something that's called capitulation. It's something I've been waiting for and looking for. And I believe it's here. And the third phase of the gold bull market is going to begin sometime soon. What does capitulation look like? Well, what you want to do when you buy something is buy it when nobody else wants it. You want to buy it when it is the most unloved and ignored asset possible. And then you ride it up and then other people start jumping on board. And then you want to get off of that uh, wagon before it goes over the cliff. Right now, stocks have been going up and everybody's on that wagon. I believe it's about to go over a cliff. When it goes over a cliff, gold and silver take off like a rocket. So that's where I want to be. But the proof that gold and silver are very unloved and ignored right now and that the opportunity is coming up is in the U.S. Mint's sales of gold and silver. This is the dollar value of gold and silver eagle sales from the U.S. Mint. And what has happened here in just the past months, the blue bars are gold and the silver bars in between are silver. And what has happened over the past couple of years is that uh, we've, we've now gone to annualize. This is all annualized data. So if sales continue uh, like they have been for the first four months of 2017, that's the amount of gold and silver eagles that the U.S. Mint is going to sell, which means that nobody wants it right now. It's unloved. It's ignored. And that is the time. That's a signal that it's time to buy. But here's the thing. They're not unloved and ignored by everybody. Right now, Russia and China are some of the biggest buyers of gold on the planet. And when you add India into the mix, there are months where their buying exceeds all global production on the planet. And uh, that means that the excess that they're buying has to be coming from somewhere. And it's coming from the West. We're selling and they're buying. They see the writing on the wall. They see what's coming. They see the potential of a new world monetary system and they're getting ready. You should too. Uh, to that, we are also below the cost of production for many of the mines. And that is a situation that cannot last because when that happens, production decreases. So production is going down just at the time when we're going to have a crisis where everybody wants to rush into it. And the only thing that can resolve that is price. So, as you can see by all of the evidence that has been presented, this crisis could be pretty darn bad, and you do need to protect yourself. We can't control what is going to happen on this planet, but we can control what's going to happen to our own personal finances. And the protection uh, that you can arrange can also give you the opportunity to come out of this crisis better off than when you went into it. And so here is how I would like to help. If you're going to investigate this further, you need to get educated on it. And I would like to give you a copy of my book for free. It is one of the best ways to learn about this subject. It contains everything that you need to know about investing in gold and silver, such as how to avoid the pitfalls and not get scammed, uh, how to develop a plan and execute it, what types of metals to buy, 
Is storage best for you or is taking delivery best for you? How to put gold and silver in your IRA. And so all you have to do is give us your email address and you can download a free copy instantly. And you can also select, if you wish, to have a physical copy of the book mailed to you for just the shipping and handling charges. The book is free. So until next time, thank you very much for watching this video. Please make sure that you subscribe to this channel and share this video with everybody that you care about. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.